The purpose of this video is to provide a brief demonstration on the means by which civil 3D alignments can be created in civil 3D drawings. With respect to this drawing we are in, currently named drawing number two, we can note within Prospector and under Alignments that there are currently no alignments defined within this drawing. As we create alignments, we should expect that such civil 3D project data will be shown under alignments within the Prospector. For this particular presentation, we'll be looking at the two more common ways of creating civil 3D alignments. The first method we will look at is the method by which alignments can be created from drawing objects. This command can be accessed from the Home ribbon under the Create Design panel under Alignment and Create Alignment from Objects. Now before I run this command, I will have to create some basic AutoCAD line work first. Therefore, getting into the drawing, I am going to simply create a series of lines using the line command. I am actually going to construct two models of AutoCAD objects which we will be converting into civil 3D alignments. The first model, as seen here, will simply be a collection of lines. For the next model, I'm going to copy this initial set of objects I've created and having copied it I will also build in some alignment curves into the second model as simple AutoCAD objects. In this case I'm going to use the fillet command and let's say for now I'm simply going to apply a typical radius of 200 feet at all angle points. Setting my fillet radius to 200 I am here building in curves at all angle points. At this point, I am ready to define these two sets of AutoCAD line work as Civil 3D alignments. Again, the command is under the Create Design panel, under the Home ribbon, under Alignment. I am going to choose Create Alignment from Objects. From the command line, I see that I am being prompted to select the line work, which will define this alignment. Having selected the line work, I hit return on the keyboard and again return to accept what is currently shown as the alignment direction. In the create alignment from objects dialog, I am going to call this alignment alignment 1. I am going to turn off the option to add curves between tangents and set an alignment label set of major, minor, and geometry points. Here I am choosing to delete the existing AutoCAD line work and as I finally hit OK, I now have at this point a civil 3D alignment. Looking under the tool space, under prospector, under alignments and center line alignments, I see the alignment which I have created, alignment 1. Next I'm going to move on to the second set of AutoCAD line work, which was essentially a copy of the first alignment, alignment number 1, but with curves. Here I'm going to define this line work as alignment number 2. Again, I go to Alignment, Create Alignment from Objects, and I'm now selecting the line work. Again, I'm going to call this alignment Alignment 2, and essentially apply the same settings as I previously did on Alignment 1. Having completed the process, I appear to now have an alignment number 2. Checking under Toolspace and Prospector, I can verify that I do in fact now have two alignments. Now the reason why I created two alignments is I want to demonstrate how certain functionality with alignments can be available or unavailable based upon how alignments are created. As you may recall, on the second alignment, alignment number two, I pre-built the alignment curvatures into the AutoCAD objects. In doing so, looking at one of these curves, when I select the alignment, notice the series of grips which I have, which allow for certain graphical edits via grip editing. Here, I can modify this curve based upon what would be like a through point setting. As I modify through point of this curve, notice that some control line work is showing from the original tangents which existed on the initial line work. I can take these control points and likewise use them to modify my alignment geometry. Going back to the first case, 
I'm actually going to apply curves to this alignment via the alignment creation tools. I can access this by making sure to clear my grips so that nothing is selected. Selecting alignment number one and using the context sensitive ribbon for alignments, I notice that the commands that I run within this will be pertinent to alignment one and therefore I can run geometry editor. Running geometry editor brings up the toolbar for alignment tools. And here I can choose under curves the creation of curves via fillet. In selecting this command, I can choose two tangents which form an angle point, and noting the command line, provide the appropriate values for a 200 foot radius horizontal curve. Here I'm going to proceed creating these curves along all other angle points, just as we did with AutoCAD objects on alignment 2. Having completed this process, I can see that I essentially have identical alignments. As I previously mentioned, part of the reason why I'm doing this exercise is to demonstrate how different processes in creating alignments can create different conditions for how we can modify them. For example, just as we were able to modify this first curve on alignment 2, note what happens, or rather what is available in the way of grip edits, on alignment number 1. Here, because the alignment definition itself originally started with simply the tangents and horizontal curves were applied after the fact, when I turn on the grips and when I look at the alignment geometry, I can see that I'm given the original angle point location and I can actually use this to modify the alignment geometry. Because of the various ways by which civil 3D alignments can be created, you as the user, as you build up experience, will have to determine what methods work best for you. Moving on to another method by which alignments can be created, which we have actually now seen to some degree, the next command we're going to look at is under Create Design, under Alignment, we have Alignment Creation Tools. In this case, having executed this command from the ribbon, the command proceeds with the assumption that we are creating a new alignment. Here I'm going to call this alignment 3. Again I'm going to give it the same settings as I previously gave the two other alignments. Having hit OK, I notice that the alignment layout tools have now appeared. Note that when using the alignment layout tools, the user should always be aware with what alignment is actually being worked upon. In this case, I see in the toolbar heading that all commands used from the alignment layout tools will pertain to alignment 3. And so here, under Alignment Layout Tools, what we see are various methods by which horizontal alignment geometry may be created. Within the first tool button are methods by which alignments can be created based upon tangents or tangents with curves. If I were to choose Tangent, we see that this is a method similar to the first method that I initially used to simply draw an alignment definition with AutoCAD lines. Having drawn several tangents and hitting enter, notice that I now have a fully defined alignment. On this new alignment, I can run the same commands for creating curves, such as I used on the existing alignment that was originally created from AutoCAD lines. Notice that in building alignments from lines and curves, there are certain sections, the commands within each type of horizontal object. Under curves, we see options for fixed curves, floating curves, and free curves. Similarly, under lines, we see commands for fixed lines, floating lines, and free lines. Now the distinction between the types of lines, whether they are fixed, floating, or free, simply have to do with how such alignment objects interact with one another. For example, if I were to choose a fixed line option, this means that I could set lines that can essentially be independent of anything. If I were to choose a floating line option, these would be commands that pertain more to how a line might be constrained to have tangency to an existing curve. Whereas with free line, I note for example that the only option is for a free line to be between two curves, that would essentially constrain the line to only one geometry which must satisfy tangency between two curves. Therefore, it would almost be as if the line has no freedom because it has to meet the requirement of tangency to two curves. So what we see are the commands from top to bottom for lines becoming increasingly constrained to existing objects. This concept would apply to curve commands from fixed curves to floating curves.
to free curves. Noting some of the other alignment layout tools, we have a command to insert PI. Here if I choose this command and choose some location next to alignment number 3, notice that it adds a PI onto the segment nearest the point I selected. Next, we have a command here to delete a PI. In choosing this command and choosing closest to one of the existing PIs on the alignment, we see that it removes that PI and joins the existing PIs ahead of and behind the PI that was just removed. As each edit is accomplished, the alignment definition is updated in real time, including all labeling. Thus, we have seen through this video the two main ways in which civil 3D alignments can be created from existing AutoCAD objects or created via the alignment tools, and even a hybridized process in which an alignment can be created from AutoCAD objects, but further modified via the alignment tools. This concludes this video. Thank you.